Let me uh, interject the second topic question in this segment about the Middle East and so on, and that is, uh, you both mentioned, uh, alluded to this, and that is Syria. War in Syria is now spilled over into Lebanon. We have, what, uh, more than 100 people that were killed there in a bomb. There were demonstrations there, eight people dead. Uh, Mr. President, it's been more than a year since you saw, uh, you told Assad uh, he had to go since then 30,000 Syrians have died. Uh, we've had 300,000 refugees. The war goes on. He's still there. Should we reassess our policy and see if we can find a better way to influence events there, or is that even possible? And it's you, you go first, sir. What we've done is organize the international community saying Assad has to go. We've mobilized sanctions against that government. We have made sure that they are isolated. We have provided humanitarian assistance and we are helping the opposition organize and we're particularly interested in making sure that we're mobilizing the moderate forces inside of Syria. But ultimately, Syrians are gonna have to determine their own future. And so everything we're doing, we're doing in consultation with our partners in the region, including Israel which obviously has a huge interest in seeing what happens in Syria, coordinating with Turkey and other countries in the region that have a great interest in this. Now, this, what we're seeing taking place in Syria is heartbreaking, and that's why we are going to do everything we can to make sure that we are helping the opposition. But we also have to recognize that, you know, for us to get more entangled militarily in Syria is a serious step, and we have to do so making absolutely certain that we know who we are helping, that we're not putting arms in the hands of folks who eventually could turn them against us or our allies in the region. And I am confident that Assad's days are numbered. But what we can't do uh, is to simply suggest that, as Governor Romney at times has suggested, that uh, giving heavy weapons, for example, to the Syrian opposition uh, is a simple proposition that would lead us to be safer over the long term. Governor? Well, let's step back and talk about what's happening in Syria and how important it is. Uh, first of all, 30,000 people being killed by their government is a humanitarian disaster. Secondly, Syria is an opportunity for us because Syria plays an important role in the Middle East, particularly right now. Syria is Iran's only ally in the Arab world. It's their route to the sea. It's the route for them to arm Hezbollah in Lebanon, which threatens, of course, our ally Israel. And so seeing Syria remove Assad is a very high priority for us. Number two, seeing a, a, the replacement government being responsible people is critical for us. And finally, we don't want to have military involvement there. We don't want to get drawn into a military conflict. And so the right course for us is working through our partners and with our own resources to identify responsible parties within Syria organize them, bring them together in a, in a form of, of not, if not government, a form of, of, of council that can take the lead in Syria and then make sure they have the arms necessary to defend themselves. We do need to make sure that they don't have arms that get into the, the wrong hands, that those arms could be used to hurt us down the road. We need to make sure as well that we coordinate this effort with our allies and particularly with, with, with Israel. But the Saudis and the Qatari and, and, and the Turks are all very concerned about this. They're willing to work with us. We need to have a very effective leadership effort in Syria, making sure that the, the, the insurgents there are armed and that the insurgents that become armed are people who will be the responsible parties. Recognize, I believe that Assad must go. I believe he will go. But I believe we want to make sure that we have the relationships of friendship with the people that take his place, such that in the years to come, we see Syria as a, as a friend and Syria as a responsible party in the Middle East. This, this is a critical opportunity for America. And what I'm afraid of is that we've watched over the past year or so, first the president saying, well, we'll let the UN deal with it. And Assad, uh, excuse me, uh, Kofi Annan came in and, and said, we're going to try to have a ceasefire. That didn't work. Then it looked to the Russians and said, uh, let's see if you can do something. We should be playing the leadership role there, not on the ground with military. All right. But play Bob, the leadership are, role. We are playing the leadership role. We organized the Friends of Syria. We are mobilizing humanitarian support and support for the opposition. And we are making sure that those we help are those who will be friends of ours in the long term and friends of our allies in the region over the long term. But you know, going back to Libya, because this is an example of, of how we make choices. You know, when we went into Libya and we were able to immediately stop the massacre there, 
because of the unique circumstances and the coalition that we had helped to organize. We also had to make sure that Muammar Gaddafi didn't stay there. And to the governor's credit, you supported us going into Libya and the coalition that we organized. But when it came time to making sure that Gaddafi did not stay in power, that he was captured, Governor, your suggestion was that uh, this was mission creep, that this was mission muddle. Imagine if we had pulled out at that point. You know, Muammar Gaddafi had more American blood on his hands than any individual other than Osama bin Laden. And so we were going to make sure that we finished the job. That's part of the reason why the Libyans stand with us. But we did so in a careful, thoughtful way, making certain that we knew who we were dealing with, that th those forces of moderation on the ground were ones that we could work with, and we have to take the same kind of steady, thoughtful leadership when it comes to Syria. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, Governor, can I just ask you, would you go beyond what the administration would do? Like, for example, would you put in no-fly zones over Syria? I don't, I don't want to have our military involved in, in Syria. Uh, I don't think there's a necessity to put our military uh, in Syria at, at this stage. I don't anticipate that in the future. As I indicated, our objectives are to replace Assad and to have in place a new government which is friendly to us, a responsible government if, if possible, and I want to make sure they get armed and they have the arms necessary to defend themselves but also to, to, remove, uh, to remove Assad. But I do not want to see a military involvement on the part of, uh, of, our, uh, of our troops. What? Uh, and this, this, isn't, this isn't going to be necessary. We, we have, with our partners in the region, we have uh, sufficient resources to support those groups. But look, this has been going on for a year. This is a time, this should have been a time for American leadership. We should have taken a leading role, not militarily, but a leading role organizationally, governmentally, to bring together the parties there to find responsible parties. As you hear from intelligence sources even today, the, 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 the insurgents are highly disparate. They haven't come together. They haven't formed a unity group, a, co a council of some kind. That needs to happen. American can help that happen. And we need to make sure they have the arms they need to carry out the, the very important role, which is getting rid of Assad. Could we get a quick response, Mr. Well, President, because I want to ask I'll, about I'll, Egypt. I'll be, very, I'll be very quick. Uh, what you just heard Governor Romney said is uh, he doesn't have different ideas, uh, and that's because we're doing exactly what we should be doing to try to promote uh, a moderate Syrian leadership and a, an effective transition so that we get Assad out. That's the kind of leadership we've shown. That's the kind of leadership we'll continue to show. May I ask you, um, you know, during the Egyptian turmoil, mm -hmm. uh, there came a point when you said it was time for President Mubarak to go. Right. Uh, some in your administration thought perhaps we should have waited a while on that. Uh, do you have any regrets about that? No, I don't, because I think that America has to stand with democracy. The notion that we would have uh, tanks run over those young people who were in Tahrir Square, that is not the kind of American leadership that John F. Kennedy talked about 50 years ago. But what I've also said is that now that you have a democratically elected government in Egypt, that they have to make sure that they take responsibility for protecting religious minorities. And we have put significant pressure on them to make sure they're doing that to recognize the rights of women, which is critical throughout the region. These countries can't develop if young women are not given the kind of education that they need. They have to abide by their treaty with Israel. That is a red line for us, because not only is Israel's security at stake, but our security is at stake if that unravels. They have to make sure that they're cooperating with us when it comes to counterterrorism, and we will help them with respect to uh, developing their own economy, because ultimately, uh, what's going to make the Egyptian revolution successful for the people of Egypt, but also for the world, is if those young people who gathered there are seeing opportunities. Their aspirations are similar to young people's here. They want jobs. They want uh, to be able to make sure their kids are going to a good school. They want to make sure that uh, they have a roof over their heads and that they have uh, uh, the prospects of a better life in the future. And so one of the things that we've been doing is, is for example, organizing entrepreneurship conferences with these Egyptians to, to give them a sense of how they can start rebuilding their economy in a way that's non-corrupt, that's transparent. Uh, but what is also important for us to understand is, is that for America to be successful in this region, uh, there's some things that we're going to have to do here at home as well.
Uh, the, you know, one of the challenges over the last decade is we've done uh, uh, experiments in nation building in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. And we've neglected, for example, developing uh, our own economy, our own energy sectors, our own education system. And it's very hard for us to project leadership around the world when we're not doing what we need to do. Governor Romney, uh, uh, I want to hear your response to that, but I would just ask you, would you have stuck with Mubarak? Uh, no, I, I believe, as the president uh, indicated and, and said at the time, that I supported his, his action there. I felt that uh, I, I wish we'd have had a better vision of the future. I, I wish that looking back at the beginning of the president's term and even further back than that, that we'd have recognized that there was a growing uh, energy and passion for freedom in that part of the world and that we would have worked more aggressively with our, our friend and with other friends in the region to have them make the transition towards a more representative form of government such that it didn't explode in the way it did. But, but once it exploded, I felt the same as the president did, which is these, these freedom voices and the, the, the streets of, of, of Egypt were the people who were, were speaking of our principles. And the, the, uh, President Mubarak had done things which were unimaginable. Uh, and, the, and the idea of him crushing his people was not something that we could possibly uh, support. Let me, let me step back and talk about what I think our mission has to be in the Middle East and even more broadly. Because our purpose is to make sure the world is, more, is peaceful. We, we want a peaceful planet. We want people to be able to enjoy their lives and know they're going to have a bright and prosperous future and not be at war. That's our purpose. And the mantle of, of leadership for the, promoting the principles of peace has fallen to America. We didn't ask for it, but it's an honor that we have it. But for us to be able to promote those principles of peace requires us to be strong. And that begins with a strong economy here at home, and unfortunately, the economy is not stronger. When the, when the, uh, the president of, of, of Iraq, excuse me, of Iran, Ahmadinejad, says that our debt makes us not a great country, uh, that's a frightening thing. The, the former chief of, uh, chief of the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff said that, uh, Admiral Mullen, said that our debt is the biggest national security threat we face. This, we have weakened our economy. We need a strong economy. We need to have as well a strong military. Our military is second to none in the world. We're blessed with terrific soldiers and extraordinary technology and intelligence. But the idea of a trillion dollars in cuts through sequestration and budget cuts to the military would change that. We need to have strong allies. Our association and, and connection with our allies is essential to America's strength. We're the, the great nation that has allies, 42 allies and friends around the world. And finally, we have to stand by our principles. And if we're strong in each of those things, American influence will grow, but unfortunately, in nowhere in the world is America's influence greater today than it was four years ago. All right. And that's because we become right. weaker uh, uh, on uh, each uh, of those four dimensions.